I'm here. Hi, everybody. I am doing Uncle Bruce here for the final hour of today's show, Monday, September 12, 2022. Uh, it's three o'clock Eastern time, and we're coming in to the final hour of trading today here. Just um, on showcase. Let me kind of mute that. We don't need to hear that. We are uh, uh, at the moment holding a 197 point gain on the Dow Jones Industrials. Uh, but that is down. Um, this morning we were at 32,504. Right now the index is 32,350. So 150 points lower uh, around the 200 mark instead of the 350 mark. Uh, let's take a look at the other indexes. Uh, S&P is up 37. NASDAQ up 127. So we're around a 1% gain for the NASDAQ. 0.94 for the S&P 500, but the Dow's only up 0.64. It's not leading the way today. Um, oil is closing at, uh, or trading at 87.74, up 94 cents on the day. That is where we're at there. Now, GameStop, um, up, down, up, down. It was as high this morning as 30.34. Then it proceeded to back off just after 11 o'clock today to hit $28. Uh, so that gave up $2.34, went into the red. It's recovered now to be a $29.09. So we're kind of just below the halfway mark of where we are for the day's range. We're up $0.17 cents right now. Volume on the day appears to be about $5.34 million. Well, if you divide that by four, what do we get? Um, what do we get? What do we get? About 1,300,000 uh, shares, 1,250,000 of pre-split volume, just to kind of bring it back to what we're used to. Normally, the stock would trade two to three million shares a day before it's split. That would be eight to 12 million a day now, and we're at 5.3 million this minute. So. Uh, we're we're basically half the volume we used to be, even with, even with a split, which is kind of surprising. You would think that splitting the shares, you'd have more volume overall, but no, we're have, we have less volume overall um, when it's all said and done. Interesting. Twenty eight low, thirty eight thirty four high, twenty nine eleven right now is where we're uh, trading at. Uh, those of you who have written options, I wouldn't fret too much about this. Uh, this is a nothing burger day here. Um, yet the Dow has been positive all day long um you know the the market has had a you know a theoretically good vibe to it but it is not that great there are underlying currents of um worry but uh, for gamestop we've had a run from the 23 dollar low to this level here hitting 30 couldn't hold it maybe we're making another run at it on the other hand maybe we lose two bucks in the next couple of days and we're sitting at 27 maybe down to 26 again and we're kind of down in that lower range it could be that for a while we're going to be 25 to 30 on this stock. Uh, the stock will tell us, uh, but the volume is, is telling me we're not really going anywhere very quickly here. All right. Other issues that we're watching um, with the Dow up 201, Apple's up $6.16, holding at 163.53, reaching 164.26 for a moment today. Now we've backed up a bit. Um, this is a good recovery today, I have to admit. I mean, you know, that I think this is the kind of move the stock may has made that people thought would have been made last week. People thought when Apple came out with their their i14 phone and the new watch and you know the other products that the stock would run then, but it didn't run then. It, it just kind of hung around and didn't go anywhere. And here we have today this upward move to, to 163. This is the best level for Apple since about, oh, August 27th or so. Um, what is that? Two weeks ago it was here. Uh, but back on uh, August 17th, we're at 175. Uh, we're still $12 down from where this stock was in August. That was after the... Um, bear rally that we were experiencing we had that bear market rally we had been as high as uh, 1 uh, 178 uh, even 182 range early in the year uh, we then cratered in uh, in june or so to the low of about 1 129 
And uh, then the stock came roaring back over time, but 174-ish, 175. And uh, now it went down, and now it's back up here. The question now is where will Apple go? I think Apple is range-bound. Um, I'm actually surprised it's even here, but I can see it 160. 570, 150, 170 range. I could see that, but I could also see 140, 160. I could see 131, say 150, 55. I could see 135, 155. But right now, 160, 360, Apple is uh, hanging in there. It's a little high on the P multiple though. GameStop 2907, uh, up 15. Um, SoFi 642, up nine cents. Volume on SoFi today, 22 and a half million, kind of quiet. We've got uh, a gain nonetheless. So Rocket Lab up 11 to 570. HPQ, Hewlett Packard, has been given up a little bit of ground. It's still up 27 cents today, 28.53, but it was at 28.90 this morning, around 10.45 today. Now we're at uh, 28.53, up 27 cents right now. So uh, it's still gaining a little. Um, easily could get into the 2930 range. It went down to the, what, 26-ish, 25, 26 neighborhood there the other day. Uh, that wasn't going to last. That was a bit too low. And so now here we are in this 28, 29 neighborhood. Those 28, 29, 30 calls are, you know, they're depreciating. They're depreciating uh, time-wise. We'll see how this goes. AMC, um, you take the APE preferreds and the amc commons match them up add it all up they're up 97 cents today add the two shares together we have a 16 dollar 23 cent market uh these shares were in the 14 range the other day they had been 28 dollars a month ago so we're at the lower end of the range and the news out of the movie business is terrible um lack of blockbusters and attendance is down and ugh. Not looking good. All right, ME, 23ME, up a nickel to 362. Matterport up 16 cents, 472, the high of the day and climbing. Nice to see. This is the best level in a week. This is uh, a recovery back to about, oh, going back to August 22nd. We're kind of coming back to levels we haven't seen since then. Uh, we'll see if there's more to it. Three million shares traded today on Matterport. The ATIP shares are off one penny, holding 115 and not giving much back. Coming back, coming up from that 85 and a half cent low uh, just a little while ago, a few weeks ago, and here we are at 115, not giving it up. Um, very good. I'm happy with that. Climb, hold, climb, hold. Climb. That'd be fine with me. Smart rent up two and a half to 307 and a half. Aspire 152 unchanged. Um, and uh, Sixtera, 588, not giving up ground, up 37 cents, not giving up any ground. Bed Bath Beyond up 24 cents to 917. Tesla's up 482. Pfizer is up three cents only at 47.88. Boeing up 97 cents. Um, Cisco up 58. Uh, Twitter is uh, down 64 cents. Home Depot down 260 at 397 a share. Our Carvana up 552. The, this stock is becoming much more volatile lately. Uh, but the used car market, eh, I'm not so sure about it. Um, see how that plays out. Um, there's there's pressures there, guys. Lots of pressures. We'll see how this all plays out. Okay. Um, home. Uh, uh, sorry, Robinhood is up 64 cents. Vanic Vector is up just 15 cents, SMH. IBM is up $1.15. Uh, Microsoft is up 214, 266 a share. Goldman is holding a 270 gain at 342. Google down 28 cents. It's been negative almost like most of the day here. Amazon up 273, been positive most of the day. Meta Platforms, the old Facebook, down 53 cents. Blackberry up 16 cents. Royal Caribbean. Is up 89 to 4813. Uh, JP Morgan up a buck 40. Co Co uh, Costco up 310. Walmart up 110. Nvidia up 47 cents. Disney up a buck. American Airlines is um, up 29 cents. And uh, Moderna down 149. I did notice a headline about uh, Goldman Sachs announcing layoffs. 
um, because they are finding that certain divisions of the bank are making all kinds of money. Certain divisions are not doing all that much. And that division is the IPO market, the initial public offering market. Not very many companies are trying to go public right now. There are some spin-offs here and there of companies, but pure out and out brand new listed companies. The market isn't in the mood to buy something brand new that's going to lose money the next two years. Uh, they're not interested in maybe getting growth someday. They want it now. And so they're buying into other stocks, not IPOs. Brian commented here that GameStop is having a little recovery right now. Um, I'm thinking October 7, $28 strike. Uh, it's a 320, 345 market. If I were to sell this, what would you put for a stink ask right now? Lower than the 345 or higher? Ah, are you going to write a $28 call on uh, on GameStop? We're, we're a dollar in the money, about 117 in the money. You have until October 7th expires. So that's a good, uh, what is that? Not quite a month. Um, and you take about $1.17 off of that. 320 range and you're looking at about 203 premium and then a 345 ask so i would be if i were trying to write this call uh or just sell it, sell it i would be offering it if i was going to offer it uh, i'd be offering a 340 to try to get the market to come up to me there and cut in front of those 345 guys and be the cheapest offerer but not down to 320. On the other hand, if you feel the shares can, you know, pop a little bit towards the close tonight, you might offer these at 360, 370 in case there's a bit of a pop up and get out. But again, you're risking the the uh, the, the you're risking the the uh, the uh, chance that you may not sell. Even if you offer 340, there's no guarantee you're getting out. Uh, you're just going to offer it and, and try to scoop 25 cents more, 20 cents more than what the bid is right now right now with 29.15 on the bid on the last trade on the stock uh this is a 115 book value contract if you get 340 for it you're getting uh you know a couple of dollars of premium for sure um you know what was that what buck 15 or 215 or whatever 225 um and that will shrink out the 225 will shrink out if the stock stays here obviously uh if the tomorrow, day after tomorrow, just in the next two days, the shares reach twenty-seven dollars, these calls will likely give up a buck, uh, maybe a buck twenty. But a week from now, with the shares just in this neighborhood, these contracts will start to cough up sixty cents, seventy cents. Two weeks from now, that would be the you know latter part of September, with a week or so to go here, a week and a bit to go. These will be down to um, you know the one eighty. Uh, 175 180 range pending the price of the shares so brian there you go you have a you have an opportunity there if you want to write an in the money call um see what you can get um oh, what else we got going on here uh thank you for saying hi to me everybody uh brian mishia how you doing aiden welcome uh kent hi only 75 and a little drizzle here today in the desert so nice the kid shot a 70 and a 69 Finished fifth in a golf tournament over the weekend. He says hi as well. How you doing, buddy? Way to go. Keep the keep your head down and follow through there. Beautiful job. 70 and 69. I can only I can only dream of that. I used to get those on when I first started. I used to get that on the front half, but nah, I didn't play that badly. But still, uh, that's awesome scoring, man. Way to go. Um, been watching the weather from Palm Desert and uh, Rancho Mirage. Indian Wells, Palm Springs, the uh, the monsoon rains, that uh, tropical disturbance that was once a hurricane, dumping a lot of rain over there. What I'm hoping is a lot of rain is falling in the Imperial Valley towards the Salton Sea, which is east of the desert, a little south. Hoping that they got a lot of rain because the Salton Sea is in trouble, real trouble. Its water levels are incredibly low. Hopefully that'll, you know, help somewhat uh, it, uh, they need a lot of water there but anyway uh, interesting weather definitely kent uh, nice to have you here welcome to the show and uh let's see if we can make some dough um uh what is happening going on uh what is your email bruce Novastar uh, stacker wants to know if you want to send me an email it's right here uh bruce Farman at hotmail.com and uh send me uh, send me a message uh, whenever you should see the link down below it should be down below um, and easy to find. 
Um, we have uh, for this weekend, uh, for this Sunday, for my one-on-one -on -one get togethers, I have one opening left. Um, we have filled up the um, we have filled up the 10 a.m. Eastern time slot. We have sold out the two o'clock Eastern time slot. We have a 12 noon Eastern time op Easter time Eastern time opening. <laughs> 12 noon uh, this Sunday for a one on one. If anyone is interested in having a one on one with yours truly, send me an email. Let me know you're interested. Uh, first come, first serve. We have one left. Okay, um, fabulous, everybody. Appreciate that. Looking forward to hanging out with some folks. That'll be great. Um, Christina, I just sold a $29 call that expires this Friday for a buck 29. I think that has to do with GameStop. Um, and that is a dollar. What would that be? A dollar 17 out uh, a premium on top of the in the money money. Way to go. It's a 12 cent contract. That's all it's worth right now. 29.12 for the stock. Now it's 29.10. So that contract is only worth uh 10 cents and the rest is time premium right on christina taking some uh take some premium there see if you can score that right on uh 60 and 65 thumbs ups have come in already thank you guys let's get me to 100 if you can help me out hit those thumbs up buttons and uh, see if you can get me to 100 thumbs ups a s a p zach assault and see one of the greatest engineering disasters of all time once you visit you'll never forget the smell Lame duck. When I uh, when I uh, hit par, I pick up my ball and I go home. Uh, DH, I'm number 72, Bruce, on that thumbs up. Um, Bama Babe CPI is out tomorrow, expecting it to be lower from July to August for the first time since March 2020. We'll be watching that closely to see how that plays out. Mind you, you know, to come from, what, eight something lower, a lot easier than asking it to go from 2.5 to 2.2 percent. But Point is taken, Bama Babe. The numbers have gone up since then to where we are now. Folks, thank you for being here. I uh, really appreciate this, uh, these these uh, comments and your thumbs ups today. Uh, commentary, love it. Uh, great to have you here. Welcome, one. Welcome all to the final hour of trading today. Here with Stock Markets with Bruce. We're going now members only for commentary. Please become a member of this channel. Please, please, please become a member. And help support this channel, show YouTube, and the rest of the viewers out there that uh, writing options can make you money. And uh, being a member uh, just helps this channel stay on the air and grow because we do not get anywhere with advertising revenue from YouTube. <laughs> YouTube does not pay us much to be uh, here from ads, I'll tell you that. Thank you all so much. We have 82 thumbs up. So close. So close uh, to 100 thumbs ups already. Thank you, everybody, for coming out here and really stepping up. Milo, number 73. Vildas, The Sultan Sea, one of the most overlooked and underrated Val Kilmer movies. Uh, <laughs> J-A-R-P. Zach, can you imagine dumping uh, Colorado River water into the desert uh, in the present-day drought conditions? Can you imagine? Yeah, not a lot of water gets the salt and sea anymore from uh, the Colorado River. I don't know if any of it makes it anymore. I think the salt and sea is slowly being died out, and that's a shame because something like two-thirds of all bird species in California uh, need the salt and sea um, in one way or another, nesting and whatever. I don't know. But anyway, uh, we were there, Jen and I, this past winter. We, we uh, took a drive out there. And uh, went into the interpretive center, and one of the rangers there was showing us uh, maps and images and stuff, and explained how how at one time the Salton Sea was uh, quadruple the size it is now. It was massive at one point, absolutely massive at one time. But yeah, it is a uh, it is a fraction of what it once was. Anyway, I know a lot of water dumped in uh, that region in a short period of time, which is a problem. Uh, when you get a, a, a tropical storm from a hurricane scenario, you get too much water too fast, and you get flash flooding and all kinds of debris going everywhere. But uh, a lot of it does flow towards the Salton Sea. And, uh, well, did it get much when it's all said and done? That I don't know. Did anyone else get a fill on the 2025s? I feel like I stole it getting a $10 strike for 20 Oh, five. That is called stealing, and I love it. Uh, well done, DH. The Salton Sea was created when a levee burst during the building of the Hoover Dam. It was never meant to exist. Zach, 
Um, JRP, they didn't imagine it in the first place, but they made the best of it for a while. And JRP, it was a celebrity resort for a while too. That's true. In the 50s, 40s and 50s, it was so huge. There were, in effect, beachside resorts. The problem was that the lake does not get replenished naturally in any real serious way and becomes saltier and saltier and saltier to the point where you can't, you, you wouldn't want to swim in it. <laughs> you don't want to go near. Uh, it really is a, uh, it's a mess. And uh, there are all kinds of plans for it. A lot of legislation has been passed, but the, the, the dollars and, and uh, fresh water is needed. And I don't know the answer to this problem because I'm not, I'm not one of those folks uh, that specializes in that area. In any event, um, we are coming into one, what is it now, 40 minutes to go in our day. And we have a 218-point gain right now on the Dow Jones, from what I can tell you. Um, we're up 41 in the S&P and 141 on NASDAQ. At the moment, with oil up 114. GameStop is at 2914, 2915. Uh, we have been flatlining around this 29 mark now since about one o'clock for at least two hours or more, two and a half hours. We have been kind of hanging around this level um, on GameStop. Uh, SoFi up a dime, uh, not going very far, very fast either. Rocket Lab up nine. And HPQ is up 27, 28, 29 cents to 28.55 right now. Uh, let's see. Um, and Zach says, yeah, it's a, til a tilapia graveyard, says uh, Salton Sea. Says Zach, beach is nothing but fish and bones. Um, uh, JRP, much like the Great Salt Lake in Utah, they too are having trouble with that lake. It is evaporating. Uh, roll through Bombay Beach, stop into the ski inn for a party melt and a cold one before going to Salvation Mountain, a sight to behold, says Zach. Uh, Jennifer is here. Hi, Jennifer. I have a 26 and a $30 GameStop for this week. I'm crossing my fingers. While the 30 is out of the money and depreciating, the 26 is in the money and losing its uh, time value. And we will watch and see uh, tomorrow and Friday, Wednesday to see just what's going on and we'll figure it out. If uh, a rollover is needed on the 26, but the 30 is going to depreciate to nothing or dramatically back, there you go. Uh, you might be uh, rolling into 30s for next week or the week after. We'll see, Jennifer. Nothing to worry about at this point. Richard, uh, number 91 on the thumbs up meter. Thank you very much. Uh, 92 have come in now, guys. Thank you for these thumbs ups. Eight more, and we got our 100 for the day. For the afternoon show and i thank you all for coming through for me i appreciate that all right alex uh, i was number 83 good evening all from the uk welcome sir somber mood in the uk these days as the uh, procession and all the pomp and circumstance of the queen's passing moves through and goes on uh welcome sir uh, nice to have you here i was just looking at photos uh on my phone um uh, the other night, uh, and uh, Jen and I were sort of reminiscing about our trip to uh, Europe. And I was asking her, well, do you remember the date that we saw Alex? Do you remember what date that was? Uh, what date in the calendar? And do you remember the day that we were in, uh, you know, the miniature museum in Hamburg? Do you remember that date? And so, and we were having, we were kind of going, well, what date? I know it was kind of neat because thankfully the Apple iPhone, when you take photos, tells you what date you took the photos on. And uh, that helps a lot because you can, oh, yeah, that was then. And then we did that. And oh, yeah, you sometimes lose the order of what you did when you did it. But um, it was great seeing Alex in the UK and London and uh, and all, all of the all of you that I saw in Europe. It was great visiting with you folks. Um, put a face to the name and vice you know not that you don't know what i look like but i got a chance to see what you folks look like fantastic absolutely wonderful we love that trip very much we're now up 183 on the dow a little lower than a few moments ago um the dow highs were set this morning in the first couple hours uh we had a dip around noon and a bit of a recovery and now another little kind of a flat line thing here not much uh, really going on. Uh, GameStop is 29.02 to 06 at the moment. Um, not too much happening uh, at this time. 
Uh, we've got uh, a 2901 GameStop share right now um, as we speak. Quick six, six, Obama, babe, where were you? What was this? Were you still in the morning show to catch my reply to you about my brother-in-law? Were you, were you, did you catch that? Uh, so we got folks asking questions of other folks. Um, Apple up 588, just under that $6 mark. And we're approaching 29 now on GameStop as it's backing up a little bit. Uncle Bruce, David Scott is saying, I am thinking of buying 300 GameStop shares to write four total contracts uh, with 75% of the purchase on margin. Uh, I know margin can be no good. With weekly deposits and premiums, I can be whole in six weeks. What are your thoughts? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a big fan of margin, but there are times where you can take advantage of it. Um, you can utilize the equity you have in a stock to get more stock. If in this case you can acquire additional shares to write contracts on the stock to bring cash in to lower the debit of the contract of the uh, margin account. Uh, then it, it, it's, an, it's an idea. Uh, obviously, if the shares hold their value or rise, then the, the uh, equity value of these shares will allow you to easily carry a margin debit. If the shares drop in value, uh, two things happen. First of all, margin becomes more difficult because what you owe is on a lowering value asset. However, you're writing calls against those assets, <clears throat> which means the calls are dropping which means you are making money on call options, even though the shares are slumping, you then roll into lower priced calls for higher premiums again and rinse and repeat, taking equity out of the stock via option depreciation, which throws money at the debit balance so that the balance owing on to the broker is lower, even though the shares are going down, the balance is going down and you're staying ahead of the curve, a turnaround where the stock stabilizes and rises a little bit, helps the marginability. Obviously, if the stock doesn't move at all, it's perfect because you uh, maintain this price range, you write options, time depreciation kicks in on these contracts, they shrivel to nothing. Um, you buy them back for less than half what you sell them for, maybe a third of what you sold them for, a quarter, a, a fifth. Keep the change, keeps that against margin, write new calls, another significant cash injection comes in. The question, of course, David, is which calls do you write for how much, um, how much of a dent you're going to make on op, on your on your margin account. If you want to bring in, um, you know, a large amount of capital uh, to make a dent on that margin balance, the age old question is, well, which call do I write? Do I write one for, say, two weeks from now, right at the money? I'll get more for that than if I write one out of the money. If I write one a month from now at the money, I'll get even more money for that one than what I would write for two weeks. But I got to wait four weeks to write the next one. And so there's this back and forth um, uh, debate that one will have. And the key here when you do option, when you do option writing with a margin balance in play, you want to bring in significant dollars to knock those margin balances down. You want them to have an effect. And you're obviously thinking about it, so uh, there you go. But if you're if you're comfortable doing it and your account is in a comfortable position and you're not right at top of the, you're right at the margin limit, you're not there, then it might be a way to go. So see what happens. Uh, Larry, uh, iPhone also tells you where to where you took the photo. You can go to the Places album if you want to find the picture and you'll remember where you took it but not when, right? SoFi uh, Flatline today says JRP. Bama Babe, quick six. I believe I missed that. Uh, David, brokerage doesn't like me writing poor man covered calls, by the way. Interesting. Um, quick six, Bama Babe. I can't recall the specific hospital he was treated, but I do know it was Tan San Tan Valley. David, with my portfolio value and by my math, GameStop would need to stay above 20 for a few weeks. Well, there you go. So that's good coverage there. And if you can bring in capital right away, like if you're buying shares today and immediately writing calls today and bringing in the first um, chunk of cash against the stock through option writing, you're immediately throwing it against the margin and immediately making them work for you. And that's what I, the way I'd recommend you do it if you were to do it. Bama babe to quick sick. I got gotcha. you. David, uh, we can discuss more in our one-on-one -on -one this weekend. 
for sure. I've done the math to see a couple of instances that could propel me forward in my contract count. Alex, uh, it was great to see you too, Bruce. Uh, have you seen the guest list for the funeral? Trudeau, Biden, Erdogan, God knows how many kings and queens. They're all coming. They're all coming. Yeah. yeah she was most respected. Um, yeah, the, uh, the uh, idea of buying shares using margin um, to write more options uh, is something you can look at, but I highly urge you guys to really keep it way down. Like if you have, for example, the ability to uh, say, oh, I don't know, let's say you own 400 GameStop shares. Theoretically, you could buy 400 more on margin if the 400 you have are bought and paid for. And you own 800 now or control 800, you owe on 400. You can write eight options against that balance, that debit balance that you just took on by taking on margin. But you're not going to bring in $5 a share on, on 800 share. You're not bringing in four grand. You might bring in a dollar fifty, two bucks, two twenty five, And so you might only bring in a couple of thousand dollars. You did just buy almost 12 grand worth of stock. But if you can bring in 2,500, three grand on an option right premium, uh, then okay. Uh, but I would recommend that what you're doing is you're going to write calls uh, that are, in one, in one sense, out of the money, or at least with a high premium, time premium. Um, but here's another strategy you can follow. I mean, I'll just throw this out there. Um, you can buy these $29 shares right now, $29.22. Immediately turn around and write $25 contracts, deep in the money, five in the money, five, you know, four twenty-two in the money. Uh, look to write one month out, two months out, and see if you can scoop a, a contract with a nice premium on top of the book value. If you can do that, um, you might bring in some decent cash. I'm just going to take a look at October's just out of my curiosity. Um, a $25 October, uh, October 7th, it's a 422 contract. It's four in the money, 422. The 25 is uh, probably writable around 5, 520 a share a contract. But you look at that and go, you're only getting a dollar premium. And that, that's not, you know, what's what's a dollar premium? Uh, that's not very good. If you write a $25 call for October 14th, maybe you can get 550 for it. Not much more premium there. You go to October 21 and write a 25, you're going to get 570 there. You're not being paid massive premiums on the call. You see what I'm getting at? Whereas if you wrote a $30 call um, expiring October 21, just picking this one off the top of my head here, you're getting $3. You can get 3 to 310 for that contract. And it's an out-of-the-money contract. So if you were exercised, you'd get $30 plus this $310. you are getting $33.10 for something you're buying for $29.22 on margin. So you owe the broker $29.22 for 400 shares if you bought 400, having 400. Um, but you're selling out at 33 That's a $4 gain times 400 shares, $1,600 gain. You don't mind getting exercised on that deal. If you don't get exercised, Shares stay at twenty nine twenty one. You have three three dollars a share coming in here, three ten a share right now, against the margin, right? So you write eight contracts. You had four hundred. You bought four hundred. You got eight hundred. You write eight contracts at three ten a shot. You're bringing in twenty five hundred bucks almost. That twenty five hundred will go against your balance to buy the four hundred at twenty nine twenty two, which is just under twelve thousand dollars. So now you will owe less than. $10,000, maybe $9,500 is the balance you owe now on 800 shares. Got it? Now, if the shares stay here and a week or two goes by or the shares even dip to 28 and the shares, you know, a week or two goes by, they drop to 28, 27, 50. These calls will go from 310 to 180, 160. You might buy them back there. Buy them back. Immediately roll over into new calls. That might be 28s for five, six weeks out for $3 again. You're adding another buck 50 is what I'm getting at. You're adding $150 times eight contracts to your account, net, net. That's a $1,200 increase in cash against the debit. You now owe $8,300, see? So if every two weeks you can bring in a 
thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars in capital by time depreciation, fluctuation in the stock price, and do a rollover and bring that balance down twelve hundred every couple of weeks, two thousand a month, twenty five hundred a month on a twelve thousand five hundred dollar debit balance. You're looking at four or five months of time. You own all eight hundred. Now your brain might say, "Oh." I own all 800. I could now buy 800 shares on margin. And I could write now 16 calls at a time. How about that? The other way to play this game a little more conservatively is you have 400 shares. You buy 200 today on margin, just 200, not 400. And now you have 600 shares. You write six calls. These calls or calls that are, you know, 30s for this Friday, next Friday. Your your debit balance is 200 shares at $29 a share. It's a $5,800 IOU to the broker. If you're writing calls that expire this Friday and they're 30s, you're only going to get 84, 85 cents. Six times is 480 bucks against that $5,800 balance. If you wrote calls for next week, Friday, and those were the 30, you'd bring in a buck 50 for next week, Friday. Those are the ones you'd probably write. Six of them. They'll bring in $900. And that'll go the 58 against the $5,800 balance you owe the broker. Now you owe the broker $4,900 approximately. So you owe $4,900 against 600 shares. And these contracts die in two weeks, not this Friday, but the next Friday. They either die worthless, they either expire at the end with a very little value, which you'll buy back, or they're in the money. And if they're in the money, that means your stock went up. So don't worry about that. But if the shares go up to 30, these contracts are still worthless. So you don't mind if they go to $29.99. Uh, the contracts are worth nothing. You'll buy them back for a dime or 11 cents on a stink bit. And you will now write 31s for two weeks out, bringing in a buck 50 again. And if you can bring in seven, eight hundred every ten days or so, seven hundred every ten days is twenty one hundred in a month against a fifty eight hundred dollar balance. Two and a half months, three months, you've paid off your margin, and now you have six hundred shares that you out and out own. And now you can think, well, why don't I buy three hundred now? I'll buy three hundred on margin, which is half of the shares I have. I'll buy half more. Go from 600 to 900 shares and go from six calls to nine calls. And now I'm going to tackle the margin debit for 300 shares and start knocking it off. And same thing, all proportionate. Two and a half, three months later, you've knocked it off. Now you own 900 shares. And you might go, well, I'll buy 400 more and get the 1300 and pull margin on 400. And away we go. And rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat using stock as your equity to bill. That's another way to play this option market. Classes are coming, aren't they? Uh, there are more classes coming. All right. Interesting stuff. Um, uh, yeah, Alex is saying Trump apparently has an invite and the vast majority of the UK is praying he doesn't come. Uh, JRP, I urge y'all to keep a buffer and not over leverage. I'm upside down on several positions at the point when there's not enough option buying power to stop the hemorrhage and put the tourniquet on. Um, Alberto, I'm here. Good afternoon, Belegal Familia. You can get, you can begin now, Bruce. Uh, Larry, is Putin invited to the Queen's fancy final soiree? Um, Bama babe, uh, JRP, I am as well, but just crossing my arms. I hope I'm exercising on some of them, getting a great price for some of my holdings. Hopefully you wrote far enough out of the money to roll. Uh, Alex, uh, Larry, um, amazingly, the Kremlin got in early with a statement saying he is unavailable. He has other things to worry about. Yes, like his troops getting annihilated in the Ukraine. DQ, I am thumbs number 109. Thumbs ups 109. We have 110 of them. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for getting me over 100 thumbs ups already on this show. That is beautiful. I love you guys for that. Thank you. Bama, babe, Larry. Um, Putin did send his condolences to the family, but turned down going to the funeral. Not sure who will represent Russia, but probably somebody will likely an ambassador or something like that. That is likely how that usually works, uh, or a foreign minister or whatever they're going to do. The uh, Dow Jones is up 173 right now. Apple holding a, one, a 604 gain, a $6 gain now. Uh, GameStop, 29.19 is where we're at on the stock 
up 27 cents, all right? See, the thing to remember is if you had GameStop in your possession when it was 45, and then you bought stock on margin at 45, and you wrote $46 calls, what happened? Well, we know the shares started to slip, slump. They started backing up. So the $46 calls would have shrunk very quickly. You'd have bought them back, and you would have had to have written new calls right away. And you have to have the stomach to say, I paid 45 for the stock. The stock is 43. I'm going to write 44s. And if you do that and the stock goes to 42, 41, those 44s crap out, you buy them back for next to nothing, and you now write 42s or 43s. You have to keep writing, keep writing, keep writing to have cash keep coming in to bring down that debit uh, that you owe the broker because your underlying shares are backing off. You don't know how low they're going to go. You don't know how fast they're going to go, how low they're going to go. So here we are reaching $23 a share just last week. Would you have been in a position to be able to do a rollover? In other words, a buyback and a new write on a on a GameStop call or calls uh, quick enough uh, every day or two for almost two straight weeks. That is what you have to be able to stomach to be doing this on margin. And that's why I avoid margin for beginners. I'd rather you just have cash and now you can just write calls when you're comfortable writing calls and not worry about a broker's debit balance. But some of you out there have got accounts out there who have, you know, who have not performed well and you're now using options to try to build your equity back up again. I get it. I know this game. Uh, and so you're writing calls to try to bring cash in to keep the heat off the broker. The trick there is, or maybe the, the reality of it is, is you may have to write much closer to the money calls that you're comfortable with or longer term calls uh, either at the money or just ahead of the money or much longer term calls even in the money. Um, and I wouldn't be afraid to write an in the money option if I can get a premium on top of the price of the stock. Tesla is a classic example for any of you out there that hold Tesla shares. If you are sitting on Tesla shares right now, which are 304 a piece, you can write Tesla calls for weeks and months out at this 3 to 305, 310, 15, 320 level. And you can bring in some serious premiums going forward that will bring you significant cash, uh, chunks of cash that you can throw against a, a, a margin call uh, or a margin balance. Uh, on, a, on a stock like Tesla, that can make a huge difference. So sometimes you're in a position, you might be in a position where you might have to write a like a January call on something like a Tesla and you're writing it out for like $4,000. You're going to bring in 40 bucks a share in premium on a Tesla stock. But that four grand can go against the debit balance to really bring that thing down and give your account a lot of coverage. And now, you, of course, you have to cross your arms and wait for the, the time to go by. Or if Tesla has, you know, a $15 swing, which you can do any time, it's up 480 today, it could be down 15 tomorrow morning on the opening to be a 290. Well, you may find that a $40 call becomes a $32 call and you buy it back and Tesla pops back up again and the call is a $40, $42 call. You write it again and you're swinging, you're swinging that call. On the other hand, you write it and set it and forget it. And if the shares just slump and slump and slump and go to 275, these calls will go from 40, 42, 44 dollars to perhaps 16 bucks, 14 dollars. You'll buy them back down there and now look to write other calls for a fat premium um, to first of all replace the money you just paid to buy these calls back, but now to write a call higher in value. And that might be a further out time frame if this has taken a few weeks or the same time frame, but at a lower strike price. And you're going from a $16 call to a $28 call by just writing a lower strike on the, the, the shares, bringing in an additional $1,400, $1,500 per contract against a debit balance. So you can use calls to bring money in to bring down IOUs to your stockbroker, and uh, especially if a shares, if your balance is too high for comfort uh, with regard to how much uh, excess margin you have, because you don't want to get a margin call, then you have no time to react. Okay. 
All right. Uh, let's see here. What's going on? Beach Boy. Is DQ in the house? Um, let's see. Um, uh, I see uh, still Master of Your Domain DQ. Uh, king of the Castle, he says. I'm still King of the Castle. Jennifer, uh, I have a $4,000 margin balance I'm trying to get rid of. So uh, margin premiums are definitely, you know, uh, I'm sorry, stock option premiums are definitely a weapon to use to knock these down. So, yes, way to go. Uh, JRP, yes, he is 109, says Jeff. DQ, uh, Michael, we'll see. He's having more tests done. So, again, there's messages going on. I don't know what's going on. I'm out of the loop on these mm, contents. Uh, let's see what's going on. We're up 212 on the Dow, $6.17 on Apple. Uh, GameStop up 24 to 29.16. Uh, SoFi 642 up nine, um, Rocket Lab 568 up nine, HPQ up 22 cents to 2848. We got ME up a penny, Matterport up 18 today, having a good day at 473. ATIP unchanged at 116. Have any more of you lately been buying ATIP, turning around and writing January 2024, $2.50 contracts on your ATIP? bringing in a minimum of 30 cents or more and buying more ATIP and writing more contracts. Are any of you doing that out there? I know some of you are. Um, I think it's a great move. Um, Smart Rent is up two and a half cents. Spire is down a penny at 151. Sixtera holding a gain of 37 cents to 589. Dow Jones now is ahead by 215 points. We have 13 minutes left in the day. Um, we're now up to 198 on the Dow with uh, 13 minutes to go. GameStop 2911 up 19. Now I'm showing it at 2908. So that's what I see here on all that. Uh, Beach Boy, a shout out to all the latex salespeople here. So you want to be my latex salesman. Splair, Beach Boy, he's laughing, he's laughing. And architects, that's right, Beach Boy, and the architects, Vandalay Industry employees. How you guys doing out there? Art Mandalay, are you here? DQ wants to know. Karim, I have also been considering GameStop on margin to write. I'm looking for a lower entry point. There you go. Uh, utilizing the stock to get more stock, to write more options, to build your income. And this is something else for you who guys out there who want to quit your day jobs. <laughs> for those of you who want to quit your day jobs and you're saying to me, Bruce, have I got enough money to do this? Can I literally do this? How, 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 show me the way. If you've got 40 grand in equity, just I'm just using a number, I'm making it up $40,000. And in your heart, you're saying, there's no way I can live off of $40,000. It's just not enough money to make money on. Uh, if I buy IBM stock, I get a 5% yield from my dividend, and that's 2,000 bucks a year. I can't live on 2,000 a year on dividends. If I had a million dollars, I'd get 50,000 a year from IBM. I, I could almost get by on that. But with $40,000, what can I possibly do with that? In theory, again, this is theoretical. You could buy, say, just say, let's say you bought 40 grand worth of uh, a GameStop. You put it all in the GameStop, all right? Uh, and then you turn around and you borrowed uh, additional money from your broker on margin to buy more GameStop. So you, you bought a total of $60,000 of GameStop. Now, the stock is just under 30 bucks a share. It's 29.11. Okay, let's just round it out to 30 bucks. For $30 a share, 60 grand, you can buy 2,000 shares of GameStop, which lets you write 20 calls on GameStop. Now, if you're writing 20 calls on GameStop and you owe your broker um, $20,000 because you had 40, you borrowed 20 to buy 60 grand worth, you're writing 20 calls on GameStop. You still have your day job. You haven't quit yet, okay? Just let's bear that in mind. You still have your day job. But you're now writing 20 calls of GameStop. And if you're going to write GameStops that expire this Friday or, or next Friday, and you can bring in a buck a share premium on contracts every couple of weeks, you're bringing in $2,000 every couple of weeks against that balance. Um, five weeks later, hopefully, cross your fingers, you've knocked 10 grand off your balance on GameStop. You owe 10 grand on a total of $60,000 original cost of GameStop. Can you now borrow another 20,000 from your broker 
and move it up to thirty thousand on the IOU level, and add probably six hundred more shares, maybe seven hundred. Now you're writing twenty six or twenty seven contracts at a time. That could bring you again. Cross your fingers with a dollar every week or so, or ten days. You're bringing in twenty six hundred every ten or so days, three times a month, seventy eight hundred a month coming in against a thirty thousand dollar IOU. See what I mean? If you knock that down a couple of months to uh, fifteen thousand, and you're still bringing in seventy eight hundred dollars in gross revenues, you might decide to quit your day job because you're bringing in seventy eight hundred dollars in a month, and your thought is, well, I can live on five grand, um, even if I pay capital gains tax on all of it. Uh, I have more than five grand left over, and I still have like a thousand a month more coming in that I need to live on. I'll just give that to the broker. I owe them 15. Now I own 14. A month later, I own 13, and I'm living on five grand a month. I have quit my day job. That could be a strategy. A strategy could be to quit a day job, keep a part time job on the side, like weekends and stuff, and do the option thing in the meantime and keep building this account. That that's where $40,000 makes you self-employed, almost. I mean, it's it, 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 there's ways to do it. you got to be very disciplined, very focused, any of it. There it is. Uh, Beach Boy is saying, Newman, Karim, George like his, likes his chicken spicy. Nick, Bruce, uh, but Bruce, what if, they, uh, what if I like my day job? Uh, well, I think you'll like this day job more than that day job because you're going to find that this day job you can take with you anywhere you want to go. Uh, instead of being locked in a cubicle. But it's totally up to you, Nick. You like your day job. Knock yourself out. Showerhead, anyone from uh, Beach Point? Credit Savage, I like my day job now that I charge the same company I work for three times the money to do the same thing in less time and just in a specific department, freelancing and dumping my money into our SPACs. Yay, and that is a wonderful thing. Nick, I am thumbs up. One, two, four. Thank you, buddy. Credit Savage, chilling with Anthony Noto today, y'all. Gonna listen carefully to what he says about SoFi Beach Boy. Bed, bath, beyond, no soup for you. Next, uh, Nick, Uncle Bruce, what does this mean when a company announces pricing for tender offers for senior notes? Uh, does it mean that they're buying back shares or selling to someone to raise capital? I think what it means is that they're announcing pricing to uh, for tender offers. They're, they're basically looking to sell bonds to raise money from investors. And they're using a brokerage firm or firms uh, that are in the bond market to help them guide them as to what kind of interest rate you're going to have to pay to raise money. And a, a firm might say, look, we want to raise $100 million. And the broker comes back a day or two later, says, we've canvassed the street. And we found that if you want to raise $100 million, uh, you need to pay interest of four and three quarters percent over five years, let's say. The same broker might come back and say, however, we canvassed our clientele and you could raise $300 million. And for four and three quarters, they, they, there's that much money available for you. They love you guys. You want more than 100? You can have 300 or anything in between. Let us know what you want to do. All right. Karim, I forgot this one. Uh, Credit Savage, when he has a q and I'm thinking about what to ask, though. I have one question in mind, and it's given market conditions and the disdain for the fintech from real banks, where do you see SoFi in five years? There you go. Alberto. The, the, the credit, that's the way. Um, that's a good answer. Good question. Splair, I, I like only the job where I can rule how my time looks like. Feels like less stress when I don't have to hurry to get somewhere. So Splair, credit savage. Uh, I, uh, Bertie, now we drink champagne when we're thirsty. <laughs> These hors d'oeuvres are making me thirsty. Uh, this caviar is making me thirsty. Uh, we're down to six minutes uh, to go. The Dow is at one, uh, holding a gain of 188 at the moment. Apple is up 593. GameStop is at 29.14, up 22 cents, just flatlining right now. Uh, Mike, ask if the reverse split still on the table. See if what he says to that. Uh, JRP writing just one call out of the money on Tesla at a 30 delta is. It is so far out of the money that a person would keep a lot of premium from time decay, and there's a much less risk. There you go. There you are. That's something to think about. 217 gain on the Dow now, a little pop up with five minutes to go. A little computer buying program kicking in. I don't know how long it'll last. It was a 612 gain on the Dow and a 29 cent gain on GameStop, a 21 
29.21. SoFi up eight cents. Rocket Lab up 11. HPQ up 24. ME unchanged. Matterport up 19 to 475. Looks like near the high of the day now. ATIP is uh, both basically unchanged. Smart Rent up four and a half. Spire unchanged. Sextera now up 45 cents to 598. Sextera trying to run for six again. Uh, has hit 599 today. Traded 523,000. So a good couple of days for Sextera in a row here. Um, Tesla's up 479 to 304.47. Pfizer down a dime. Boeing up 84 cents. The Dow now up 209 at the moment. All right. Um, let's see. What else? Um, Alberto, the credits absolutely love when Uncle reads the lyrics via Biggie Smalls. Uh, <laughs> Nick, so after the senior notes pricing, would the price of XPE, would it be dropping? It has been on fire the last four days. I have no idea, Nick. Uh, I don't know what the uh, the effect of a note offering will have on a stock that I don't follow. Uh, there's an answer for you. Credit Savage, would I be a fan Boeing? Would I be fan Boeing too much if I take a picture with Anthony Noto? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Michael, I have been a terror since the public school era. Uh, that, thank you for that. Um, JRP, a 350 strike call. At a 32 Delta would bring in $11.55 per contract with a 70% probability of being out of the money at expiry. Takes 69 days, though. Wow. Um, Alberto, he is laughing. Uh, Credit Savage, give me the loot, uh, Beach Boy. Serenity now. Serenity now. There you go. Uh, GameStop, 29.20, uh, 29.17. Three minutes left in the day. It's up 25 cents. Uh it just isn't performing here. Uh, might maybe the GameStop is topping out uh, for a bit. It might back off a bit the next few days. Nick, Uncle Bruce, I am asking because I'm in a pickle, i.e., short on EXPE. Well, I figure you are. I just don't know who they are and what they're about. Uh, is that who is that? Is that um, like I don't know who is this EXPE? Um, I appreciate you asking me, but I don't know who this is and. Uh, um, you know, you're shorting in an up, you're shorting stock on an up day. Mind you, the up day was a lot more higher than it is now. So that's a good thing. But if the company is raising cash, it's either to uh, to grow. It's Expedia. Thank you, DQ. If they're looking to grow, acquire somebody else, reorganize. If it's reorganization, then maybe the shares will be under some pressure. Uh, that might be it. Uh, thank you for that, Expedia. It's the booking company. Yeah, um, Nick loves his pickles because uh, he's in he's in a pickle right now. Well, you know, my friend, um, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, they they likely are raising cash through bonds because they can, uh, as opposed to having to raise money by liquidating stock, diluting themselves. The street is probably so in love with these guys that they'll raise them, let them raise money via a bond. But by raising cash, they have now raised their overheads because they're going to pay interest now on this money they're borrowed. If the money they borrow can make them more money, then it's not a bad deal. But if the money they're borrowing is to take care of IOUs and other issues, then it's a reorganization. And that may not necessarily be good for the stock long term. But I don't know the status of the company. That's the thing where I can't help you. All right. So, okay. So, total pickup on SoFi today 400 for quick 66. Way to go. One minute to go. Uh, SoFi is at 640, up eight. GameStop is 2920, up 28. Apple up 603. The Dow up 219. Where is Larry? Uh, has he got any bells? Uh, oh, he's around. I'm sure. Credit Savage Hankel Bruce, I have a question about a stock you've never heard of, and I'm in trouble. So, tell me what to do. Do to uh, do all the due diligence in 30 seconds and let me know. Thank you. Uh, Nick, dump them because they send not good clients. They send not good clients. I, well, again, I, I don't know what to don't know what to make of it, Nick. I can't answer any questions on that. Larry, thank you, my friend. The bells have rung. We're done for the day. Send in the bells, Larry. I'm in a pickle too, says DQ. Uh, thank you, Larry. We're done. Here we go. We're up 236 on the Dow. 606 on Apple, GameStop 2920 last trade. 
uh, up 28 cents. Uh, Smoke Dog, uh, I missed Uncle Bruce singing Biggie Smalls. AZ, Uncle Bruce, do you have a guess as to what's going to happen to the market tomorrow? Do you think this run is buy the rumor, sell the news kind of thing? Apple being up six bucks today is crazy on no news. Good point. Tomorrow is, I think, um, um, uh, inflation data day. So uh, before the opening, we're going to find out what the inflation looks like. Ask and you shall receive, says Larry. Here are the bells. Alberto, I'm laughing. Uh, I am a pickle, says Nick. Beach Boy, DQ, ask Zazu. Uh, Christina, I'm going to take the rest of the day off. Laugh out loud. Good idea, Christine. Christina. Uh, Chris, you guys that are always in pickle should buy a pickle a pickle Rick t-shirt. Um, uh, Splare, I, uh, thank you, Larry. I'm wishing you all a good start to the week and a good night. Thank you, Splare. Alberto, Larry, thanks, pal, for ringing the bells for us. Um, tomorrow could be one of those sell on the news days. You know, we could theoretically get a uh, an inflation report that's a little lighter theoretically and the market goes down anyway <laughs> everyone has been ex predicting a lower inflation report and yet the market today did not gain 350 points when it was all said and done it gained 231 it was up 350 only gained 231 could it be that tomorrow in the first uh, two hours we have a little pop at the beginning, and then we go down from there, and we're negative 200 points because the talk will be from Fed observers that the Fed isn't going to change their policy on raising rates, no matter what the inflation rate indicates tomorrow morning. How about that? That could be it. Uh, we'll see what's going on. Beach Boy, Christina, how's that hedge fund coming along right now? Nick, it is, it's a rig market. That's all there is to it. Alberto, Christina, in her own... Uh, in her own hedge funds, she's the leading sniper. Uh, JRP, Nick, uh, yep, uh, rigged by the wealthy to benefit the wealthy. Cindy, I just bought 100 shares of VXX. Uh, DQ, I I if this is a bounce, then the dead cat is made of flubber. <laughs> Beach Boy, Nick, it always is and has been all along. Well, there you go. Well, <clears throat> you conspiracy theorists, we're going to be here tomorrow to see if we can take some money out of the market from option writing. And I, I have a feeling this week we will take money out of the market. I think you guys will do just fine this week uh, because I think this market is running out of gas right now. It's running out of steam. And uh, I don't think anything the market can say tomorrow, I don't think anything the indicators can give us will justify the market to go much higher. I, I think we've had the run. But, you know, you got to go through each day. This is why they, the old expression is that's why you play the game. This team is heavily favored to beat this team, but you got to play the game first before you know. Well, that's what's going to happen tomorrow. We're going to play the game and find out what is this market all about? Is it got any legs in it? Is it run out of steam? Where are we at, really? And we'll play it from there. And that's all we can do, you know? The name of the game is playing the game itself. And, folks, I have a feeling if you're an option writer, you're going to do well this year. Um, going to do very well absolutely all right there it is there we go um what else is going on i certainly hope so uh my platform's flashing red lights as jr splare i have to sit tight until it drops again perfect time to go now with ghostbusters the game nick you have to be in it to win it that's right zach going down like the niners in the second <laughs> michael speaking of heavily favored why the face indy um credit savage thanks for everything i can be Bagel Gang, hope you all have a good one. I'm about to chill with my Anthony Noto now. Right on. Christina, as my father used to say, you can't win if you ain't in it. That's right. If you ain't in the game, you can't win the game. You got to be in the game. And pick your spots. Be the assassin that you're training to be. And let's go from there. Folks, thank you. Have a great night. Great rest of your day today. I'll catch you tomorrow morning before the... Uh, 8.30 show with the Gold Bagel member alert. And uh, join me then. And uh, maybe uh, maybe our friend, uh, 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 who's our friend here? Who am I talking about here? Uh, here we go. Uh, Chris Savage, tomorrow you can let us know how it went with Mr. Noto. Uh, that would be fabulous. Zach, thank you, my friend. Alberto, have a good one, pal. Nick, good night, Uncle B. Uh, JRP, later. You, see you bright and early. AZ. Got a John Quick this market, my friends. Have a good night, y'all. DQ, good night to everybody.
Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. And uh, Larry, I'll catch you later. Uh, Nick, uh, let's hope EXPE drops six bucks tomorrow. Well, let's hope so. Zach, uh, neat, neat, neat. And we'll be here tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Take care. <laughs>